Here we have a spectroscopy exam question from the OCRA specification in AS level chemistry taken from the 2018 depth in chemistry exam. Please don't overlook the depth and breadth exam papers when revising for your A level in chemistry as you've got some great spectra questions like this one and all they're missing is NMR. They have got infrared, they have got mass spec and they have got, as you can see for this one here, a little bit of overlap with other areas of organic chemistry. This one's got stereoisomerism included. So let's have a look at my model answer to this exam question. If you want to have a go with it before we go through this, it is the 2018 Depth in Chemistry exam. Okay, so here is my model answer for this. Uh, effectively, compound F is a trans isomer, which is a useful intermediate, very good. And we've got loads of information about compound F. Now, if we have a look at our instructions for the question, in the mass spectrum, the peak with the greatest relative intensity, that means the tallest peak, is caused by the loss of a functional group from the molecular ion of compound F. We need to determine what compound F is, and we need to use all the data. And just like with the uh, A-level exam paper questions, you must use all the data but you are allowed to annotate your spectrum so that's what i'm going to do first i'm going to annotate my spectrum just here with important things that i can identify from the uh, structure and i'm going to then incorporate this in my full written answer in a logical well-structured line of reasoning on the next page so here for my infrared um, uh, the CH here that I've labelled up, you don't get any credit for this, it's throughout the A-level, it's just hopefully you are looking at this and not assuming it's some sort of mysterious OH peak. I'm also not going to suggest this is an OH because it's not. We know the OH is a nice significant scoop shape just here, and so we're not going to go in and suggest that this little glimmer of uh, peak here is anything substantial. Here's my most important thing. I'm told here that this is an alkene at the start of the question. So it's a trans stereoisomer. And instinctively looking at this region, I don't see an alkene peak. It's gonna be very difficult to see the alkene because what I've been given is a C double bond O. That C double bond O is a really clear major peak that does overlap with the alkene peak when it's present on a spectrum. So actually I've got two functional groups by this stage already. I know I've got a C double bond O from looking at the infrared and because that's going to overlap with another part of the infrared spectrum, I'm using information from the question here that tells me it's a trans stereoisomer to know that I've also got a C double bond C. Moving down here to the mass spectrum, I've got two uh, very obvious peaks that I need to talk about. The first one is the molecular ion peak, which is going to be at 70, and that tells me that the molar mass of my substance is 70 grams per mole. And then I've got the peak with the greatest relative intensity, also known as the tallest peak on the mass spectrum, which is at 41, and that's been formed when a functional group is removed from the structure. And so I'm going to come back to that after I've got a suggestion of what my molecule might look like to back up my answer. First off then, when I do my full written response of this, I'm going to start with the obvious, the empirical formula. You might think to yourself, well, I'm able to manage to figure out what F was without this, but you won't get all the marks without it. You must make sure you use all of the data, and that counts for the A2 versions of these as well. I would also make sure that you give your mole values here just as an extra pointer to three significant figures as a minimum, as I have noticed people round these to two sig fig and then really struggle to get to a whole number ratio. The molecular ion peak, as I mentioned, is at 70, so that means my molar mass is 70 grams per mole, and that means that since my empirical formula molar mass was 70, my molecular formula is identical to the empirical formula. So I'm going with C4H6O here. That's not actually a very big molecule, so this should be fairly easy to clip together. We've just got to be careful because, as we've already mentioned, there are two functional groups present. We've got the uh, infrared spectrum telling me that I've got a peak at 1,630 to 1,820 for the C double bond O, knowing therefore that it must be an aldehyde or a ketone, but also it's trans as given by the instruction in the question, and so it has to be an alkene as well. You might look at this and think, well, how come you're not suggesting it's an ester? It's only got one oxygen. Don't get carried away with things that can't be possible from the formula. So straight away here, since I know it has to be trans and it needs to be an aldehyde of a ketone, I'm going to have a, a go at drawing this. Now, first off, I'm going to do the double bond in the middle here, which is what I started with. And since I know it must be trans, I'm going to put an example of the same substituent group on each carbon atom here. 
I've gone for hydrogens because I'm not able to do two CH3s since I only had two carbons left after I created the double bond. And I know one of those carbons is going to have to be the aldehyde or the ketone group. So I've gone with two H's as my example of two of the same substituent group here, and I've positioned them in the trans orientation. So I've got one above and one below just here. Now on the other particular strands here of my double bond, I'm going to put the aldehyde functional group. It isn't possible to put a ketone on here without creating a molecule that doesn't demonstrate any stereoisomerism. And then on the other side, I put what's left from my formula, which is the CH3. A lot of people struggle with where to start when it comes to putting this structure together. My advice is the functional group. So start with your functional group and then position things around that. It does make your life a lot easier. So this is what I think my molecule is, and I now need to use my fragment information. I was told that the fragment at mass to charge ratio 41 was formed when a functional group was removed from the molecule. Well, that's going to be my aldehyde, isn't it? If I look just here, if I take that off, what I'm left with is this 41 structure here, which has got the double bond still there and all the other good stuff, but I'm missing the aldehyde group. And I'm demonstrating this as part of my answer to ensure I get the full six marks. It's worth noting that the examiner's report often critiques students for not using the fragment ion peak as instructed correctly in their answer, and this causes people problems in the second year exam as well. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it has made a difference, but before you go, I do need some help. Please leave this video a like before you go because it really does help support my channel and let YouTube know I still exist. There's loads of good stuff around the screen now and links to my other video content in the description down below, so make sure you check that out before you head off. Until next time though everybody, happy revising.